The Sacramento Kings are about to end the longest playoff drought of all time, yet have received little to no hype from the mainstream media. The lack of attention for the now second-seeded Kings was exemplified a few weeks ago in Los Angeles when the second-highest scoring game in NBA history took place, but despite Sacktown getting the W, Fox and Monk were asked about Westbrook's fit in LA. What were you guys' thoughts with the addition of Russell Westbrook? Uh, was, it talk, was it thoughts about Westbrook or was it thoughts about us? Cause I don't give a, I don't, I don't give a fuck who's over there. Yeah, we ain't worried about that. It doesn't man. matter. We yeah, some, man, we here. We you see, here. you see the league, the talent in this league. There are a lot of talented teams. Obviously, he added talent to this team. Um, but we come in, we worry about us. We here too, though. We coming at everybody, for sure. The previous built-up chemistry from teammates at Kentucky in De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk, the association's leader in double-doubles, DeMontis Sabonis, and a surefire all-rookie team member, Keegan Murray, have fueled Sacramento to a definitively shocking campaign. An hour and a half north of the Bay Area in Sacktown, the Mike Brown-coached Kings have climbed out of their seemingly never-ending organizational rabbit hole. Sacramento is posting the highest offensive rating of all time, the most points per game in 22-23, the highest field goal percentage in the clutch, the third highest assist per game mark, the best road record in the NBA, and remain undefeated when a game goes to overtime. However, the underlying theme for Sacramento is of course their lack of playoff experience. To be fair, let's not forget they have Harrison Barnes, a former Golden State Warrior, who helped the Dubs get one win from repeating as world champions before they blew a 3-1 series lead to LeBron. Barnes played the Wiggins-Durant type role in the fact that he could adapt to being both the first and second option on the wing next to Curry, but not having reps as a collective unit when it matters most and four losses ends everything could hurt Sacramento at times in the postseason. But in my opinion, the underhyped up version of John ja Morant and De'Aaron Fox has the niftiness and fluidity working off the dribble to really exploit in-game defensive adjustments and game-to-game -game defensive adjustments. Defenses are going to try and trap him in pick and rolls at some point in the playoffs, but not just his mid-range effectiveness, his assist-to-turnover ratio, which ranks 58th best in the NBA, not too bad. Also, the fact that his outlet in Sabonis in that pick and roll is right there at number 62 in that area, that's going to make the Kings tough to take the ball away from. De'Aaron was ruled out of the Kings last game with a hamstring injury. Definitely not the greatest sign, so we'll see how he can recover from that. Speaking of Sabonis though, he's very innovative in terms of how he operates offensively. With his ability to make plays after catching passes as the role man, he's not strictly a face-up player, he doesn't strictly play from the post, it's his ability to be the dribble handoff guy, the kickout passer when he rolls, and his general IQ that makes him one of the best small ball centers in the game in terms of the fact that he started his career as a power forward next to Miles Turner. The way he's adapted his game has been really sensational. Meanwhile, Keegan Murray's been one of the more overlooked rookies this season. He's a versatile screening ball handler who's really benefited from the mentorship of coach Mike Brown, having taken and ran with the starting small forward spot. This kid's shooting 42% from deep range. That's the best efficiency among first-year players by far. If you picked him up off waivers in fantasy, good on ya, but the progression of Murray is something to keep an eye on for sure. Don't forget he's got a twin brother about to enter the NBA next year. <laughs> Completing the puzzle of an overwhelming yet balanced starting five, suited for the three-point based ways of basketball in the modern age, there's the three-point sniping phenom, the Red Velvet, Kevin Herter. It's safe to say Kevin's fit next to De'Aaron Fox is night and day much better in the backcourt in comparison to how he fit next to Trey Young in Atlanta. Both Malik Monk and Kevin Herter are stars within their roles, an element for a team which isn't glorified like superstars are, but is nearly just as important. Because in the gassed up ring culture era, it's easy to forget that basketball is a team game and that a superstar player can't win without glue guys like Herter who are willing to play off the ball and keep the floor spaced. The Kings have a multi-motion offense fluidly featuring rhythmic play sets one after the other within a one possession basis which matches the team's well-meshed array of complementary weapons. Speaking of flowing consistency, 
That's exactly what's happening atop the Golden One Center's main entrance, where the lighting of the beam has become a nightly tradition. It wasn't too long ago that scoreboards like this one against the Boston Celtics were a nightly tradition where they were just getting killed. That makes this Kings team in 22-23 the Cinderella story of the year. But I want you to be the judge who and or what should be heavily covered in my next Kings video. Subscribe so you're updated on that next Sacktown vid. Leave a thumbs up to support your boy.